Hi guys, and welcome back. I haven't actually filmed a video in... I don't even remember. I'm not even excited to be here. I'm really excited to be here. I actually had a dream last night that I reinvigorated my YouTube channel after asking for guidance from my higher self galactic team, whatever you want to call it, before I went to bed last night. And this feels like, yeah, it feels like a long time coming and it feels like something that is going to be really super nourishing for my own soul. If we haven't met before, hello, I'm Jay. I am a speaker, I'm an author, I'm a life coach, I'm many things. Um, most of all, I'm a creative, I'm an artist. I'm really passionate about helping the next generation of women to thrive. So really harnessing what it is that makes us unique, what it is that makes us special. And in a world where we're taught to kind of devalue that and in a world that sometimes fails to recognize the beauty and the significance and the brilliance of the artist, the creative, the forward free thinker, the innovator, uh, I really am a stand for that part of you. And I believe we all have it. I absolutely believe we all have the capacity and the potential for innovation, for creativity. And I also believe that it's more, it's more prevalent in some of us than others. And there are truly some of us who are here who know that actually this is my life's work. This is my mission. This is my purpose on this earth. And this is what I really want to do while I'm here is create. And so I am here for you. I'm here for me and I'm here to, I guess, to share, share my wisdom, share what I've learned along the journey. I'm 30 now. I've been creating, not that age matters, um, as much as we think that it does. I've been, what's probably more important to know is that I've been creating, you know, consistently for probably the last 10, 12 years. Um, but before that, you know, my entire life. I believe that we're all creative beings. Everything that we do is creative and or has the potential to be creative. Sometimes like it can get a bit destructive, which I guess is part of the process. Um, but what's really important for me and what's really landed for me over the last um, couple of years, I finished writing a memoir. Um, my first book, What Am I Doing With My Life? I actually wrote my first book when I was like seven. And my second book, What Am I Doing With My Life? Um, is out in ebook form and is going to come out in print hopefully later this year, probably later this year. So that's a bit about my journey, who I am, what I'm doing here, and you'll get to know me. I can't help it. I like love sharing lots and lots of pieces of myself in all these videos. I believe that the juice of life and the joy of life is found in bringing our full selves to the table. No matter what that looks like, no matter, you know, regardless of the judgments we have in our head. And that's actually what I want to talk about in this video. So that's a really beautiful segue. It's funny, I never, I never actually know how these things are going to go. And sometimes I'll have like an outline or a plan for my video. And I wonder, you know, how is that going to fit with that? And it's like creation, right? It's like creating anything. Sometimes we can create two seemingly incompatible pieces. Like it might be pieces of writing or maybe it's, you know, paintings in a, in a grander scheme or body of work and it's like how the hell like we can't yet see the transition between the two or the link and this is what I actually you know this is where I love the process of really trusting the magic and trusting the like the mysterious unfolding of creation where whereby we can allow those links to make themselves known through us and our logical mind our rational mind doesn't always have to see how two things fit together but as we um as we continue to i guess trust the process show up lean in like i didn't have it all figured out before i hit record on this video and yet here i am and it's working out so far um but we yeah we just lean in we trust the process and then the links kind of make themselves known so what i want to talk about this morning and in this video is the importance of, okay, here we go. The importance of discarding other people's judgments and reclaiming the value of our unique expression and who we really are. 
So why is this important as an artist? To me, everything that I create is an extension of who I am. And that to me is what makes the experience so exciting, what makes the experience so rewarding, what keeps me kind of showing up every single day is that like I've gotten to the point now where it's almost like I can't not. Creation and what I'm making, whether it's a YouTube video, whether it's like a, you know, writing a sales page, writing a, a Facebook post, creating an Instagram reel, not that I'm doing that as much anymore, but whatever I'm creating is an extension of who I am. And this to me is like an endless portal, an infinite opportunity or an infinite, a series of, an infinite series of opportunities to explore and find out who I am. So I talk a lot, and you guys will hear this in my videos, I talk a lot in my work about knowing who we are, creating a sense of like inner solidity and a sense of self that can help us really navigate through the world. But the beautiful thing about that is, it's like a paradox where I can feel and really have a sense of myself and, and be so certain and sure of who I am. And I also have no freaking clue, right? Like, and I'm also still figuring it out. I'm also still endlessly evolving. I'm also still exploring myself all of the time at the same time. I went through this period a couple of years ago where, and this is kind of indicative if you've experienced like bipolar disorder before, or this is certainly my experience with bipolar. I would literally wake up in the morning and have no idea how I was going to feel. And this is like the, the flip side of that or like the generative experience of that. That, that was a pretty scary experience because I hadn't, you know, I, I didn't know how to surrender to it. I didn't know what was happening. I was, I felt really like out of control and disassociated. And there was a lot of kind of trauma, like wreaking havoc on my system then. We will talk about that. And I've talked about that in a few TikTok videos. So go and follow my TikTok after this if you want to. <laughs> um, but one of the, the things that the generative experience of that is knowing that I can wake up in the morning and have no expectations about how I'm going to show up that day and who I'm going to be. Because when we, when we can, when we have expectations in ourselves, and these can be conscious expectations. It could be like, you know, I actually really believe this. I believe that, you know, I need to be, you know, disciplined. I need to be devoted. I need to be focused. We can also have unconscious expectations. So I believe I need to be perfect. I believe I need to be, you know, I need to, be, I believe I need to have a certain amount of dollars in my bank account before I'm worthy of doing like X, Y, and Z, or before I truly love myself and let myself live a fully, you know, expressed existence and express life. And what happens when we have all of these expectations is that they create limitations for us and they create restrictions and they create these like, I'll, I'll talk a lot about this in my videos coming up, I'm sure, but they create what I like to think of as like a carrot on a stick in front of us. And when we have expectations and we're buying into them continuously by reinforcing them, by, you know, making them very real through our thoughts and our words and our actions rather than stopping to question them and release ourselves from them. We create this experience where it feels like we're literally, yeah, we're chasing something continually that we can never ever catch. So if you've had, I've had this experience so many times, but a specific example, I feel like writing my first, writing the memoir, writing the memoir that I um, have written <laughs> was a really huge experience of that for me of feeling like it was always just on the other side of this thing like you know I'll just finish this chapter I'll just do this next project or I'll just like you know write this next post I'll just um for me the, the book became like a big carrot because it was like on the other side of this I'm gonna have you know I'm gonna have a book deal and I'm gonna have followers and I'm gonna have money and I'm gonna have this and it became like this it became so big, this like promise of euphoria over here that I couldn't create. Like I just completely took myself out with this, right? And when I say take yourself out, I mean like, you know, you, you, you're you almost like unable to continue. Like for me, it was really, I just, I was so like bound. Like it felt like I was being wrapped up in these like 
cords, I don't know what else to call them, but like wrapped in cords and it felt like I couldn't move. Like I couldn't write, I couldn't sit down at my laptop. Everything felt like a massive struggle. And I mean, when I say couldn't, it's like I physically could. I've been in experiences where I like can't get out of bed physically. Like I just could, didn't have the strength to carry on in those moments. If you're there right now, I totally feel you. And it was like, yeah, I created such a, a big carrot for myself outside of here, like over here, that I forgot and I just literally failed to remember. And I also didn't know, didn't know fully that the true treasure and the true, you know, glory and, you know, juice and the true value, what I actually love, the experience, is the experience of creating. And so when we create these expectations of ourselves, when we kind of wake up in the morning to go back to that analogy, when we go back to, you know, when we create these expectations of ourselves and we have these like carrots that we're chasing and the other end of that is like a stick that you're using to beat yourself up to like keep like, you know, whipping yourself. Think of like a horse, right? Like you're whipping yourself into shape, not in a good way. It's like pretty, you know, it's, it's another form of self-abuse. But what happens when you're chasing that is that you're missing all of this. And when you're missing all of this and when you fail to recognize and understand and claim the value inherent in this and the process of creation, not just the end result, then you create this kind of like hell for yourself where it's almost like, you know, you, you, that's when you kind of have to introduce the stick, right? Because you're like, your, your true self, your soul, you know on a deeper level that like this is the experience that you love. This is like for me filming this video, like this is the experience that's like nourishing your soul, not like whether other people read it or watch it or whatever. Like this is the experience you want to have. And yet you're so focused, you've got this like laser, you know, a tunnel vision onto this one particular outcome that you think is going to, you know, pay off or be the big trade off what you know this hell that you're experiencing now so you kind of have to introduce this like whip to like whip yourself into shape which then further exacerbates the problem because you know it starts eroding your self-trust and you're like well i don't actually want to be doing this but i feel like i have to so i'm gonna and that's when you experience things like what's it been like for me just to kind of ground this in a really like practical reality this is when you do things like you punish yourself or you set kind of mini like reward goals for yourself. Like, um, you know, it's okay. Like I'll just get to this bit and then I can, you know, go and watch Netflix for an hour or then I can like binge tomorrow. Or I remember I used to do it at uni, like just get, you know, just do this assignment, get through this assignment. And it's like, I mean, you know, like most of the Western world is doing this. Like if I just get to like, you know, my two weeks paid vacation time, then everything's going to be okay. Then I'll go and like lie on a beach for two weeks and I'll be fine. And I mean, you know, there's merit in having a goal and having a focus and having something at the end of that to know that rest is coming. But there's a real difference between like creating those things out of a sense of lack. So when you believe that you're essentially saying like, I don't, you know, I don't have any innate value. What I'm creating isn't actually valuable until other people value it for me. Think about that. If you're hooked on like the outcome and the end result, what you're essentially saying is I need other people to tell me that it's valuable before I believe it myself. I know, huge, right? But what that's thinking for a sec. But when you reclaim that and you reclaim the power that you have in the process of creation, the love that you have, right? Like you reclaim like I actually freaking, I love this. Like I'm allowing myself to love this. I'm allowing myself to experience the fact that I actually love doing this. Like I'm allowing myself to really value this process and this experience of creation, even when it's hard. And that doesn't mean that it's, you know, that it's easy. It's not right. We know this, it's not easy. Um, but I'm going to allow myself to know how deeply I love it. And the story that I wanted to tell that kind of the story that I wanted to tell that goes with this is to kind of illustrate, illustrate this, um, illustrate this point in this experience is I was walking through Melbourne and there's different, um, there are different 
myths and stories and parables that offer this same overarching theme. This is how it showed up in my life recently. I went on a holiday and I was in a new city and I was walking through this suburb that I just was so breathtaking by. Like it was so beautiful and I had the whole morning and I just literally just like wandered the streets and around every corner it was like trees and beautiful like bright orange leaves and it was amazing um these buildings like these old brick buildings and I had these climbing vines going up the side and these like little flowers that like all these vines with flowers on them that were literally like little suction cups sticking to the wall. And I mean, we just don't have that where I live. So I was just, or I've never noticed it if we do. I was so transfixed. Like I was so transfixed by this experience that I was having. And I kind of noticed as I was like walking around being like, wow, like look at everything. I noticed that people were kind of look at me like look at me sideways because to that I mean they live there right like this is it's not unless they're kind of you know tripping on tripping on acid or something they're not going to have that same like awe and wonder of seeing you know the street that they live on for the first time you can do that by the way if you want to just kind of take the blinders off and commit to um yeah seeing everything through new eyes it's really fun but I was, yeah, and I was walking around and I started noticing that other people were kind of giving me these like sideways glances because I was literally like all up in this tree's business being like, whoa. And I, I noticed myself pulling back. So one of the things that I've come to really understand and know and love about myself completely is, and this is something when I talk about like your uniqueness and your unique value and your unique, your natural, like your natural gifts, your natural, what's the word I'm looking for? Your natural way of being in the world, your natural state. My natural state is to do things quite slowly. So I love taking my time. To me, and I remember when I was little, I was just, I was always walking, I would always walk at the back of my family, right? Like my family would be going on ahead, we'd go on bushwalks and hikes everywhere in a shopping center. Everyone would kind of be like, you know, 10 meters in front of me maybe not that far, but I always felt like I was at the back. And it was because I was, I mean, I like to think I was taking everything in. Like to me, we're not going anywhere in the sense that like, there's no destination that we need to get to very quickly in terms of life, right? And the joy and the beauty for me, it's like a really, you know, innate for me is the slowness. Like I love, yeah, I love taking my time with things. What happened was that because what I perceived was that, this is when I was little, everyone else liked to go fast. Everyone else rushed. Everyone else was always kind of, you know, in this like rat race, like the way that I saw it, to get somewhere. Little me at the time saw that and then said, okay, well, if they're doing that and it looks like everyone's doing that and I'm the only one that actually wants to go slow here, so because I don't have the inner resources to back myself and trust that what I love is actually worthy and valid and valuable. I'm going to, and this is the decision of the little you, right? This is not like a, a logical, rational thing. It's just a decision that you make usually, you know, in response to some really intense pain, especially if it's like continually over time, like this can happen once or it can happen like, you know, if you think little you's going, or little me is going on a walk, like, you know, with her family every other week, and this is, experience is happening again and again and again and again, you start making a decision, or I start making a decision that, okay, so fast must be the right way, must be the valuable way, must be the good way, and slow is not the right way, like, it's wrong, it's bad, it's not okay, and so then I started speeding through the world and going really fast, and brings up emotion right because you're like I mean I, I and I've done this in like therapy and whatever like I want to go back to that little girl and be like no you you've got it right like no one's right or wrong but ever in that sense everyone's right and everyone's wrong like you your choice and the way that you innately function in the world is valuable and it's valid 
it's perfectly okay. And there's, you know, there's so much merit in doing things the way that you're doing things and taking things slow in literally stopping to take it all in and smell the roses. And so as I was walking through the city and as I was doing all this stuff, I was holding this coffee cup in my hand and this analogy kind of came through for me. I think a lot in metaphors and analogies and I spend a lot of time kind of, yeah, like that's the way I communicate with myself is through pictures. So I was walking through and I was holding this coffee cup and didn't have my keep cup on me at the time. So I was using a disposal cup, sue me. <laughs> um, but I was using this disposal cup and I was like, oh, I've been taught to value other people's judgments over my own inner knowing. Huge. What if I had been taught my whole life, like I was about to throw this cup away, and I was like, what if I'd been taught my whole life that this disposable coffee cup was like so valuable? Like, you know, imagine if I grew up in a world, this is what I want you to imagine now. Imagine if I grew up in a world where everyone had told me my whole life disposable coffee cups like they're really valuable like you've got to take care of them right like oh my gosh you know everyone's out to get these disposable coffee cups like everyone's like worried about them everyone's fixated on them all the time like you know this is what's valuable and like i know from my perspective now we know the truth that you know this is essentially it's valuable for the time that i'm using it and then it's going to go away. It's literally going to go in the bin. It's not actually going to be worth anything once I throw it out. On the other hand, what if, stay with me here, I promise this will all come together. What if I had this gold necklace and I loved this gold necklace and the whole time I was growing up, my parents, my family, my friends, the media culture was telling me while they were telling me that the coffee cup was valuable, they were telling me that my necklace wasn't. They were like, mm, I mean, what do you do with it? Like, like it, it's consistently like how, you know, no one's gonna buy that. Imagine hearing that. Imagine the necklace is like your creative gifts, who you really are in the world. No one's gonna buy that. Why would you, why would you pay for, you know, lessons on how to shine that? Why would you show that off in the world? No one wants to see that. Who heard that as a child, right? No one wants to see that. That's gross. Ew, no one wants to see that. Like, and so imagine you've got this worldview where the whole world, and this is like other people's judgments, right? And people do in our world, in our culture, they give a lot of merit to what other people think and other people's judgments. Think about how often we stop ourselves from doing something. Think about, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago, I would have just put my head down and not even bothered to enjoy my surroundings because of other people's judgments. I would have been too scared to hold myself through that experience and, you know, and I would have just, you know, I couldn't have enjoyed the experience that I was having like I did because I would have been too scared of what other people thought because I was still valuing this coffee cup. And so I just kind of brought it all together with this analogy and I was like, you know what, I'm going to throw this coffee cup away in a minute. And I'm going to know that I'm going to use the analogy that this coffee cup is other people's judgments. I know that, you know, they might be valuable for a time in the sense that I can use other people's judgments or what I perceive other people's judgments are to inform me about my own judgments against myself. Think about that one. So if you think other people are judging you for a certain thing, it's usually, um, you know, there could be in reality or you could be in, you could be projecting an internalized judgment that you have against yourself. So it's like, oh, that person is, um, you know, that person's judging me. They think I'm so, you know, hoity-toity. It's like, well, do they? Or have you just internalized a belief that you're hoity-toity and now you're projecting that onto them? Anyway, you can use them to, you know, create more self-acceptance within yourself, see the places where you've been suppressing yourself, or, and then, or, and then you can throw them away. You can know and trust your own wisdom, knowledge, declaration, decision about what is valuable. If you know that your necklace is valuable, if you know that you love your necklace, if you know that you absolutely love to dance or love to sing or love to, you know, write stories about absolutely everything and anything not, that, you know, that you think no one else will care about, then love it. 
then write it, then value it, then make time for it. Take that necklace out, shine it up, take it, you know, show it off if you want to, you don't need to, show it off, wear it every single day. Like be open to and willing to flip your entire script and perspective of what is valuable and what isn't. Because a lot of the world right now has some really, really, really twisted beliefs about what is truly valuable. And everyone, you know, everyone's entitled to make up their own mind. A lot of people are just kind of going with what the world says. So they've grown up a certain way, their culture's experience, you know, their culture's fed them certain things and they've just eaten it up and they're like, okay, this is the way it is. A lot of people are doing that. If you're anything like, you know, me, and I'm going to say that, for me, internalizing those things made me really sick and made me really, I mean, it just never, nothing ever felt right. And I'm still very much in this process of like dredging up what I've consumed without thinking and really examining, okay, well, what's truly, what do I actually love? What's truly valuable for me? And then also having the kind of courage to like make that matter in your life and implement that and act in alignment with that. So not just like, okay, I love my necklace. It's like, okay, so I have this incredible necklace. Let's just say it's not a necklace because that metaphor can't go any further. But like, let's say that it's like a growing plant. Now, <laughs> just bear with me on this one. Let's say that it's a growing plant. So now in my life, I'm going to take time to water that plant. I'm going to take time to work on my creative projects. I'm going to take time to... I'm going to protect that plant from scorching sun, from, um, you know, it might be from other people's criticism, from my own criticism when I need to. I'm going to protect it from like a, a, you know, a tornado or some wind might come through and try and like knock it over. I'm going to keep it in a safe place. I'm going to really do what I can to nourish it and nurture it and help it to grow. So this is, yeah, I mean, it's paradigm shifting, right? Like it's literally, you know, we have, we grow up one way, we grow up thinking that the coffee cup is valuable and all of a sudden we realize, actually I can throw this away, right? And, you know, it, I'm going to be okay without it. Like I can live without the judgments of other people and it's a, and this is like, this is when we talk about like sacrifice, what we sacrifice for our work and, you know, all good creativity has sacrifice and inherent in it. We have to sacrifice a lot for, for, you know, to live a creative life. But what I've come to realize and what I, what I understand at a, at a, at a much deeper level now is that like, it is the things that I've had to sacrifice were never actually that valuable. <laughs> the things that, you know, the true treasures, the true, like the true experiences, the true, the true things that I actually love, like, you know, like creating, like the things that I actually love. Whatever I had to give up to experience them. It might have felt horrendous at the time. It might have felt like, and I've had experiences where it's just felt like, and that's, you know, you have ego deaths, right? Like it feels like a death to give something up. You know, you think about you holding the coffee cup and everyone's told you it's really valuable and you're like, oh, I can't. But it's like, you know, in hindsight and retrospect, this is something you've got to go through. Like, I can't go through it for you. But knowing that coming out the other side, looking back, I'm like, oh, okay. It was never, you know, more than actually that valuable. I didn't need to hold on to it for any reason. And what I've, you know, everything that is like that I truly valuable is still with me and will never leave me. I just get to choose how, you know, I get to choose how prominent a place it has in my life. Because, you know, it's either, it's not either or, it's both and, but yeah, I get to choose to create, you know, make time for this. I choose to um, invest in myself. I choose to, I choose to keep showing up no matter what. Like that's a choice. That's a choice too. And I choose to do the work to unravel my expectations, to see through the illusion of those carrots and those sticks and I choose to be who I really am and know that that's enough.
Cool. Cool, cool. All right, this is wrapping it up now. If you've got any comments, um, definitely leave them below and yeah, let's have a conversation about this. Let's see how we go. I, um, I'm still practicing wrapping up these things and wrapping up these videos, but you can come and work with me. I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring, creative mentoring and soul guidance sessions. So if you know that you can feel that you've got these like carrots and these sticks and these kind of, you know, these cords wrapping around you right now, one of my um, gifts is being able to just know that you're worthy of seeing through them and liberating yourself. And I um, can help you with that. So it's like having the space where you can, yeah, it's gifting, I guess it's investing in yourself and gifting yourself the space to be able to come in and dedicate some time to that because they don't just, I mean, sometimes they just fall away and sometimes you know, the process is kind of, the process always gets to be like organic and ever unfolding. But I know for me, there was a real intentionality of like, no, I'm, I'm setting myself free. Like I'm doing whatever it takes and I'm going to unbind myself from these like grips and limitations on my mind because I know I deserve to be free and I know I deserve to live and create in a space that feels like <laughs> good and not like bound and also just like you also just it gets to a point where you like can't move forward and you can feel that right you can feel you're kind of like spinning your wheels you can feel that you're not like growing and that's when it's so important and um yeah it's so important to ask you ask for help for yourself and to invest in yourself so yeah message me um i don't think you can direct message on youtube but send me a dm on instagram or facebook or an email i'll put my just go to Instagram for now. And yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Hallelujah. You've got this. Yeah. All is well.